Hello everybody, it's Bruce again. And uh, today I want to show a little bit about this, this FreeCAD software that I've been using for the past couple weeks. Uh, the FreeCAD software is an open source CAD software and you can do like a lot of different types of CAD modeling with it, but uh, the past couple weeks I've just been doing really designing parts and simple assemblies. I don't know anything about the drafting or drawing or any of the other modules. But anyway, I'm going to give a little demonstration on the software and uh, talk about my impressions of it. So what I'll do is just go through and make a really simple assembly as fast as I can. I know a lot of these um, like CAD videos on, on YouTube can be very boring, so I'm going to try to uh, jump through it as quick as I can. Okay, let's get started. So as you can see, we're in the, the, the software right now on my screen. And... One thing to note is that I'm actually running version 0.16, which is um, not the one of the. It's not a released version. It's like a, you know in development version. But also, this entire software I think is not released. It's in beta or whatever. So um, I did that. I don't remember why I did that. I I just wanted some extra thing. But uh, one other thing I did is I've added in the assembly module, which was pretty easy to do. Um, I don't remember where I found it, just somewhere on their wiki page, and uh, with Linux, just threw in a couple commands into the terminal, and it automatically, automatically, you know, um, installed. So that's there, that's working. Uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, it's pretty much out of the box. So anyway, go ahead and start by creating a new part. I never really use this task tab. I always go straight to model, and so far what I've been doing is just creating a sketch to begin with. So what we're going to make is a mallet, just like a really simple kind of dumb mallet, not a realistic one. But uh, so first I just, you know, um, I'm in the sketch mode and I just selected uh, the, one of the default shapes, rectangle shapes, and I'll just kind of set it arbitrarily and right click to unselect. Then I'll s dimension this top line with the horizontal dimension maybe 30 millimeters is pretty good. You can also name the dimensions, uh, although I haven't tried that yet. And then I'll make the height also 30. And you notice when everything is fully constrained, the lines turn green, and it also tells you that over here. So I'll close out of the sketch, rotate it a little bit. Oh, one quick note on the rotation is um, I'll talk a little bit about the controls. So if you go to Edit and Preferences, you can see under Display the different types of 3D navigation it has. I like the Blender navigation. I'm not sure why, but that lets why I like it the most. But with that one, you can hold down your middle mouse to rotate around rather than like having to hold Control and Right or something like that. There's also other ones though. If you like Inventor, maybe that's Autodesk Inventor and whatever you can play with that. And the other thing I like to use is the zoom at center. So like when you're, I'll show you, uh, cancel out here. When you zoom, it actually goes wherever your cursor is rather than just like X, Y, zero. So I find that pretty handy. Anyway, that's, that's it for the controls. Um, now that I've made that simple sketch, I'll click on it and click the, they call it pad in this program. Basically it's an extrude. And this will be the handle of my mallet. So I don't know, like 300 millimeters high. Looks kind of okay. Just hit OK. And just like most CAD programs, you can also um, create rounds. Actually, I need to hold down the control button for this. It's a little bit difficult because I have the microphone also in my left hand. So there we go. And then just click around. And then set it, of course, to whatever radius you want. I'll I don't know, like four or five millimeters looks pretty good. Something like I could probably sand by hand. Um, so that's pretty much it for the handle. Go ahead and save that. Next, I'll go ahead and create the second part and just buzz through this real fast because it's basically the same thing as we just saw with the handle. It's just going to be the mallet head. So make an arbitrary rectangle, give it a dimension. This time, let's say 100 by. Um, well, this could be like the top view, so, oops, so, and then we'll make it like 75 wide or something. Maybe that's too wide. 
Yeah, let's try 60. All right. Close that. And again, click on that. Pad that. Um, maybe a 60 also. There we go. But of course, this will need a hole in it for the, the handle. So click the top surface and then select sketch again to sketch on that surface and it'll let you use these two edges as a reference. You can also um, use other solids as a reference by clicking that tool and then clicking the edges and then they become references just like this, but I don't need to do that in this case. So I'll just make a rectangle like so. Um, so it was 30 high and 30, so it should be shaped like that. And then I'll dimension these. Now with it dimensioned, I should be able to move it around. Um, doesn't really matter where I place it. I'll just leave it kind of wherever like that. Of course, I could dimension it and make it correct, correct but <clears throat> excuse me. don't want to waste time here. So I'll go ahead and... Uh, use the pocket tool here and then select through all there we go hit OK then now the next step is I'll create the assembly part and the thing also is about this program like the one thing to know at least I think this is correct hopefully what I'm telling you is right is it's basically these are all the modules of it and what I think is all the modules are basically is is opening up well, actually, they call them workbenches. All the workbenches are is are all the, all they're doing is opening up uh, different buttons and, of course, different functions behind them. But I'm pretty sure like the core program is the same all the time. So, so now, so like I'm still in that same part, but I just switched down to assembly mode, and I'm sure there's nothing that would stop me from like assembling in the the part itself. But just to keep it kind of clean, I like to create a separate assembly file to bring the parts into. It just works better in my head. Maybe that's maybe not the only or best way, but so I'm going to save this. Okay, now I'll create a new new uh, object and I'll call this. Go ahead and save it. Call it assembly. Okay, and here in the assembly you can bring in the other parts. So I'll bring in the head that and it just drops it in. I don't really know where it drops it in exactly. The one weird thing about this program is I can't really see a good way to like see the datum planes and the uh, coordinate system. I mean you see one down here to give you a, a general orientation but you don't like see where it actually is so I don't know where this... I'm sure there's some way. Maybe it's down here. I'm sure there's some way but... I, oh, okay here. There it is. Actually if you look at the bottom left you can see where I touched that point. It says zero zero zero. Okay, so makes sense, but I don't know. It, you know, I've like I said, I've only been using this program for about two weeks, and only for you know a handful of hours in total. So I'm really a beginner with it. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and bring in the uh, handle, and I'll just place. I, I, I don't know how you like put that in. It, I don't know how, what to do here, so I just kind of drop the handle somewhere like that and then start applying the constraints. And in this case, it's probably the easiest thing to do. Now, and another thing about this program is I don't see, if I could see the, um, if I could see like the planes and the coordinate systems and the center lines, I could probably more uh, easily and probably better uh, place this. But as it is now, I only know how to like place it based on the solids. So. If anybody knows like how to do this part better, that would be great. But for now, what I'll do is I'll just uh, use the, what is it, the, um, don't know what it's called, but use this uh, constraint just to um, match the surfaces. Yep, okay, that looks good. And I'll use it again this time to match this surface to this one. Oh, but it, you see in this case, it's like the wrong side. So you just hit this button here and it flips it. That's good. So then I'll go ahead and do the last constraint, which would be this one to this one. And then it's done. It's fully constrained. So that's pretty easy. Looks pretty good. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is you can actually look at whatever 
constraints are open. I found that kind of cool on a couple of models I was doing where I wanted to see the mechanisms and how they're how the mechanism worked. Um, but actually, here we shouldn't have any. Yeah, we have no degrees of freedom. Well, I can I can delete that first one, that Z or Z yeah Z constraint, and then should be able to go in here. Yeah, now it shows that Z one is open, and just to show you, and then you can animate it. It'd be kind of cool if you can just select it and hold it and kind of watch the thing. I mean, this is really simple, but if you had a mechanism, it would be kind of cool to like slowly step through it. There are some things you can change here, like how fast it's running and how far it goes and stuff. But anyway, um, what else can I show? Well, that's about it. That's a pretty simple demonstration, I guess. But you get the idea. So far, I'm liking the program pretty good. Uh, it's been really solid as far as performance. It hasn't crashed hardly any, just maybe once or twice in the whole time I've been using it. And uh, yeah, it works pretty well. I mean, I've used quite a bit of other high-end CAD systems in my, my job in the past. And definitely this one's not quite up to spec compared to those. But for the stuff I'm doing, like simple mechanisms and simple parts, it's really fine. I've just had to spend a little bit of time getting used to it. And I imagine the more I use it, the better I'll get at it and the more I'll like it. I, I really doubt it'll, I'll like it over some of the more expensive, well, this one's free, <laughs> all of them are more expensive, but of the more, very expensive CAD pro products like uh, Pro Engineer and stuff like that. But uh, but I think it'll still work and it, it'll probably, I'll, I'll probably continue using it um, for my personal life. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, this short demonstration and and review of the software. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time.